New Mexico, where native son Johnny Tapia takes on Hugo Soto, and Tapia will defend his WBO Junior Bantamweight Championship. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Bontempo, along with Tony Page, as ESPN Super Bouts presents this title confrontation. There is Hugo Soto of Argentina. Nice record, the 30 knockouts. The number three contender, according to the WBO. The crowd at Tapia's hometown stadium here. Very much behind their fighter. And Tony, based on that, the way Johnny Tapia is in Albuquerque, Soto has a huge task. Oh, it's like he starts down two points already. Johnny Tapia is always exciting, always gets his hometown crowd before behind him, so every little thing he does is gonna influence the judges and the crowds. So if he lands a couple of jabs, you can expect a lot of cheering in the background. Johnny Tapia, native of Albuquerque, big rivalry in this city along with Danny Romero, moved out of Albuquerque to Las Vegas, Indio, California, Inglewood, California, started fighting over there, but when he comes back, this, is usually a big fanatical uprising for him, and that is Johnny Tapia. Just under the 115 pound limit, and he is a pretty dependable and a reliable machine. Oh, he, he comes to fight. There really isn't any feeling out process for Tapia. He just gets in there and does what he has to do. Uh, whatever it takes to win, he'll do it. Swarm, stay outside, uh, brawl, doesn't matter. Tapia will do it. So on this ESPN Super Bouts series, you see something that is always very fun to watch, the crowd truly getting into a hometown hero. So Tapia and Soto are set to go. Let's take a rules look. This is how the contest will be governed. 10 points to the winner of a round, three knockdown rule is in effect, but no standing eight count. A fighter may be saved by the bell only in the last round, only the referee can stop the fight, but doctors are given some good input. So we are in Tapia Town. Tony Rosales, the referee, will have those rules to abide by. We are ready for the opening round, scheduled for 12, and here we go. Tapia and Soto. And Tony, Johnny Tapia, more than most fighters, plays off the emotions in the crowd. Oh, if the crowd is yelling and screaming, it just seems to keep Tapia alive, picks up his game, always takes it to another level, which is, it's kind of funny. He starts at a high level and then pushes it from there. Most fighters are hard pressed to even reach Tapia's starting point. You will see Johnny Tapia at times waving the crowd on, imploring them to make even more noise because it steps him up another level. He feeds off the crowd, the crowd feeds off his interest in them. Tapia is one of those champions that will take exactly what you give him. If you give me the body, I'm gonna take it. If you protect your body, I'm gonna go to the head. If you press me, I'll slug. If you stay away, I'll come after you. And Johnny Tapia's record reflects that versatility. 36-0 with 22 knockouts as he comes swarming in on Soto. Tapia can slug, he's knocked guys out. He's also had some interesting boxing exhibitions. What I like about Tapia is Soto hit him and then Johnny already picked up his game, tried to hit him three, four, five times to erase that one shot so he can be ahead in the judges' minds for this round. Tapia made a big comeback after problems with the law, problems dealing in drugs, came back, won his first title in 1994 in an emotional thriller against Henry Martin as he stopped him in the 11th round of an October 1994 bout in a place called The Pit on the college campus in New Mexico. And he just loves to come back for reasons just like this. The crowd already on their feet, it's only round one. What makes Tapia such a good champion is he's always ready to attack. 
If he jumps in there, he's going for the knockout. If he doesn't take you out, he just keeps throwing punches. And every time he lands two punches, as I said earlier, Dave, the crowd is up and cheering. So Soto has to get in there and try and punch back to slow down Tapia. But when you hit Tapia, it, it tends to wake him up. You'll notice that Johnny Tapia does not get cheated with his punches. Excellent technique, a couple of left hooks, and Johnny Tapia setting the stage here in round one and in a typically aggressive first round. I don't think he knows how to take a round off, Dave. He just comes to do his job, throw punches over and over and over. Johnny Tapia starts the first round of almost every fight as if the opponent has kept him waiting for years. So we come to the end of the opening round, scheduled for 12, Tapia and Soto don't go away. There is Hugo Soto, second round against hometown icon Johnny Tapia in Albuquerque. Good first round and typical Tapia. Came out, his punches were very crisp, keeps his hands up in position to parry any punch that comes his way, and he threw some very good left hooks to the body when uh, Soto left his hands up just a little bit high. Johnny Tapia sets a pleasing pace. Good left hook by Soto. Tapia right back. The fans are already up. Johnny Tapia already trying to close the show, digging the body. Watch the head movement. He is a pleasing stalker. Great angle by Tapia. He stepped around his man. So he went, when he went to look to see where he was, Tapia hit him. Tremendous left hook punishment doled out by Johnny Tapia. Excellent body work. And Soto cannot get away from it. He should step away. He should move away from Tapia so he can regroup right now. He's leaving Tapia right in front of him to throw punches. Soto has 30 big knockouts. He should be using some of that power right now to see if he can keep Tapia away from him. Tapia has won the battle of quickness. And so Soto cannot get those big punches off. Halfway through round two, already a crisp beginning here for Johnny Tapia. Now Tapia can just walk straight in because Soto's not throwing any kind of a jab to make Tapia pay as he steps in. Tapia continues to dig the hook, then moves to the right out of harm's way. Soto has been stagnant in round two. Tapia has been very good, sorry Dave, with the left hook to the body. When, when Soto gets in tight, Johnny takes it downstairs and whacks the ribs. Tapia wasting no time taking what is offered and he has made a home for the left hook to the body in this fight. Now Tapia comes on, egged on by the crowd. He tries to put him. Soto down. Good right hand to the body by Tapia. Relentless to the body. Good hook by Tapia. Some fighters get into a pattern when they keep throwing the same punch over and over, but Tapia's been successful with left hooks to the body and left hooks to the head, so Soto has a lot to look forward to, and Tapia hasn't even started with the right hand yet. Soto has a long afternoon to look forward to based on the early start here as Tapia showing the value of conditioning off to a blazing start and truly getting the attention of Hugo Soto in round two. The second one has been a good one for Johnny Tapia. And a little bit of respect between Tapia and Soto. So Johnny Tapia will be lectured by his corner now. And in Tapia's last fight, he came out with a knockout victory over Ivan Alvarez to maintain his WBO title. Soto, in his last fight, captured the IBF Latin America's title with an 11th round knockout over William Lopez. So both fighters coming off impressive victories coming in here. Tapia looked very good in, in the last round. As we see, uh, Soto has a cut 
over his right eye. Tapia is very controlled. Uh, he just he takes what, what what you give him. If you leave if you leave your face unguarded, he's going to hit it. If you leave your ribs unguarded, he's going after it. If you come forward, he's ready for you. Johnny Tapia can fight so many different styles. That's what makes him such a good, very good champion. And Johnny Tapia never too tired to take advantage of an opponent's mistake. So we start the third round. Nice blazing start, as you might expect from Johnny Tapia. And Hugo Soto coming in with a lot of momentum. Fighting very well, but has been a little too stationary. He also seems to come in without the left jab. He needs something to wake up Tapia. I mean, there he is throwing it, but from weird angles. He needs to just sit down and try and just, just touch him with it. See if you can find the range, because Tapia is very elusive. Good example of it right there. Tapia jabbed and then moved out of punching range, making Soto come to him. Now Soto's doing something good there. He's got cut, so he doesn't want to just leave his head out there and get popped. So he's moving a little bit, but he's, he's not coming in. His punches are very wide, and, and that plays into Tapia, because he can beat you with his straight punches. And if you send Johnny Tapia the message that your punches lack sufficient steam, he'll be on you very quickly. Tapia has shown surgical precision throughout his career, particularly in the boxing style. Sometimes he's been reluctant to go to it, but Tony, he's showing an educated left hand here and good movement. Tapia has the full package. It's just if he wants to use it. If he sits back and uses his jab, he can beat most of the guys in his division without using the right. If he turns over to the left hook, same thing. He's well-schooled in all the punches. It's just sometimes he, he, he watches too much to see what his opponent's doing. Soto's just bouncing around, not really throwing any punches. When he does, they're from strange angles. Tapia really only had one terribly hard fight in the last couple years, and that was against Arthur Johnson, a 12-round victory in July of 1995, in which he kept his WBO title, but also bled during the bout and came up against a guy that night who had similar height to him and took away a lot of the jab Tapia had shown in previous fights. You can dominate uh, a short guy when you fight somebody your size and bigger. It's different. The angle is different. You're not jabbing down. You're jabbing either straight across or even up. And if you're not used to doing it on a regular basis, it's difficult. And as you look at Soto, a little bit shorter than Tapia, you see that Tapia is jabbing down and that Soto is tailor-made from a stylistic standpoint for Tapia. Not moving his head. He should be trying to go to Tapia's body to try and slow Johnny because Johnny just like gets the shuffling back and forth up on his feet, moving around. You want to just slow him down a little bit with body shots. Johnny Tapia continues to show the way as we come to the end of round three, scheduled for 12 in this title bout. A look at Hugo Soto from Argentina, venturing across to Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's a long journey, his quest to take the WBO Junior Bantamweight title holder from the man you're seeing in the black trunks and the blue trim, Johnny Tapia, who has been flawless through three. You know, and he doesn't get distracted. Johnny's landed some pretty good shots, though he took one right there. And, and he, he never gets frustrated. He just keeps throwing punches. Here he is trying to take his man out again. If he can't, he, does, he doesn't stop. He doesn't worry about the fact that he can't knock a guy down because he's got a world-class chin. He just keeps throwing punches. Good shots inside by Tapia, but he takes one from Soto and comes back again. Tapia on the outside, but Soto finally got through to Johnny Tapia. Soto looks like he's hitting some stride here for the first time in the bout. But he's starting from too far back. He had a nice little flurry. Now he's pulled far away from, from, from uh, Johnny, and he's starting to come in again. He's Soto has a problem getting inside. Yeah, and to set up so far outside, you're just walking towards your man. Doesn't even make any sense to move your head because you're out of his range anyway. Soto can try jabbing his way in, but really, he'll have to do it by moving his head. Yeah, bobbing and weaving, coming up, trying, come on, coming underneath some of Tapia's punches. Again, I think he should go to the body a little more because Tapia still has a lot of bounce in his, in his feet. Tapia, a lot of bounce, 
Lateral movement here in control. Able to use the jab, goes to the body. Soto trying to hone in here and gets a couple left hooks going. And Soto coming to life a little bit in round four. Very awkward in this round, but, but it's being effective because he's, he's changed his game just a little bit, giving little different angles to, to, to uh, Johnny Tapia. But he still has to be a little busier. At least he's jabbing and coming forward now. Tapia has the look of someone off to that fast start. A racehorse, for example, now settling in. Enjoying the pace, and we haven't seen as much power from Tapia, but good boxing in round four. Again, if he figures he can't knock the guy out, but you can reach him with your punch, you keep throwing him. Now you just don't want to burn yourself out, so you take your time, you look for the right shot, and you throw it. Soto has made this a much closer round. Still may go to Tapia based on his accuracy, which could be the defining difference in this round at least. Tapia's doing the right thing, staying a little bit outside, making his man come to him, and beats him with that overhand right, right on the side of the head. Johnny Tapia getting more of a challenge from Hugo Soto as we move forward. Stay with us, we'll be back with round five. Worshippers of Johnny Tapia have gathered at the sports stadium in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Nice outdoor facility here. A rarity in boxing, good afternoon outside fight. Kind of throws you back to the old days. And in the corner, some maintenance after all the water splashing around. So here we are in round five, Johnny Tapia and Hugo Soto. And Tapia fighting before a throng of admirers, including Oscar De La Hoya, who is here. Well, Oscar enjoys fighters. Some fighters, believe it or not, don't like to watch other boxes, which I find strange. I think Pernell Whitaker says he doesn't watch tapes. I still don't believe that. But uh, Oscar De La Hoya enjoys a good fist fight. And Johnny Tapia putting on a good show here, opening up and trying to score with both hands early against Hugo Soto. Now Soto tries to dig down underneath, and we've got body warfare going on. See, there was Soto in a good position, landed some good body shots. Little clash of heads. Instead of staying there, he went all the way back across the ring, put his hand out to tap, touch gloves with Tapia. And you, you know, you're wasting time. You had the, the, the upper hand right there by being right on you, man. To go all the way out there, plays into Tapia's hands. Just take a step back, not five, not six. Fighter must take one step back and then go to the attack. Fighters are broken and a little bit more of a civilized pace, if you will, here. Not the big combinations. We've got boxing attempted by Tapia. Soto trying to work his way inside. And Soto has a few more chances here than he did earlier. But he doesn't need to be against the ropes, that's for sure, because Tapia will go to the body. Tapia swarming, good hook, and then he backs up and makes room, then throws a couple right hooks by making himself a lefty for a second. And now Johnny Tapia. Having shown that, goes outside and boxes. So Hugo Soto has had to endure many looks in a short time. It's such a problem for Soto. He figures, okay, I'm gonna be fighting a brawler. All of a sudden, Tapia turns into a boxer. Then when you go after him, he's back into a brawler. So he's got his work cut out for him. Does he stay outside and get beat, or does he get inside and get beat? What he has to do is, if he gets inside, really throw some hard punches to the body, try and bring it up to the head, and then move away. So now Tapia's coming after you. So maybe he should stay halfway between outside yeah. and inside and there get beat, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hugo Soto trying to figure out what many other fighters have not been able to, how to beat this guy as Johnny Tapia continues to plow forward, showing some good angular movement, exquisite hand speed, and the ability to dominate a very gutty and game opponent. The final seconds of round five are ticking off, and Johnny Tapia continues to put rounds in the bank in his quest to retain the WBO title. Tapia just doing a wonderful job. It's a boxing clinic for, for Johnny Tapia as we look at Hugo Soto's corner. Tapia is, is, is just so uncontrolled. It doesn't matter whether he's fighting on the outside or inside. Everything in his game plan is working. The instinctive value is there for Johnny Tapia. A strong fighter on the inside, but it seems that he's better 
when he's on the move and firing the hooks. He throws his punches, makes his man come to him. He's very, very effective when he has to do that. And, and Hugo Soto cannot go all the way across the ring to get away from Donnie to reset himself. Just take a couple of steps and then come in. Hugo Soto, a pretty good power puncher, 30 knockouts in the 49 fights. So the ability is there to finish a fight if Tapia made a big mistake. And he shouldn't be leery of the pressure because he did fight for the WBC flyweight title back in 94, lost to Yuri Abakachov in eight rounds. So at least he knows what it is to be in a championship fight. So you figure you learn from that and realize a little more pressure and maybe uh, you can be a champion. Hugo Soto fighting in the United States for the first time. Most of his bouts have taken place in Argentina and that alone is a major adjustment. Talk about losing the home court advantage. <laughs> Go to a different country. That's what happens when the money, in this case, Via fan support is with the other guy. Now Tapia hurts Soto, puts him in the corner. Soto almost went down. Tapia, there's the blow, <laughs> waving the crowd into it. The Deacon, Johnny Tapia, trying to get his parishioners in line. Some fight, some champions would lose focus if they did that, not Tapia. He wanted a little boost from the fan to see if he could put this guy away. Johnny Tapia cannot live without the fan support. Sometimes nicknamed Johnny Maestro for the music he's trying to convey, a concert-like atmosphere with the fans. And there was a little bolo by Tapia. And uh, this illustrates he's getting into a higher level here. He's really focused. Uh, he's so focused that he can take time out to get the, the, cr the crowd to chant and still go back to what he's doing without getting hit, without jeopardizing his chances in there. Throw two hooks and on the follow through, wave the glove, then bring it back for defense. The Johnny Tapia, as he reels off victory after victory, has been a treat to watch. And Hugo Soto has been a game competitor here, coming at him and showing some credentials of his own. But the hand speed of Tapia is the difference. And I think that the chanting and the cheering for Tapia isn't going to bother Soto because when he lost to Abakachev in, in back in 94, he lost in Tokyo, which was the champion's hometown. The fighter has to be able to go on the road and win that big fight when the other guy has the title. Now, Johnny Tapia going semi-southpaw here. Really closer to squared up. Looked like he was setting a trap. I never saw a fighter back up and shift his feet, and then all of a sudden, voila, I'm back to a righty. He went 70% southpaw, but did not commit. Had he gone southpaw, the right hook would have been open. And that is an example of the thinking man's approach Tapia brings. That was a big right hand. That one landed square. Soto keeps coming forward. So as we close in, on the halfway mark of this fight, it continues to be the Johnny Tapia show with Hugo Soto. Very early stages of round seven, and Johnny Tapia continuing to do a tap dance in, around, and maybe through Hugo Soto here. Tremendous performance against a good challenger for the WBO title. Right now, six rounds in the book. I, I have a shutout, Tapia, six rounds of nothing, 60 to 54. Uh, one thing you can say about Soto, takes a tremendous shot. He's been hit some flush right hands by Johnny Tapia. Backed up a couple of times, stunned a couple of times, but keeps coming back. He's a tough fighter. He just needs to get inside and do, be a little more busier, work on Tapia's body. Hugo Soto could beat a lot of fighters with this performance in this bout. The only problem for him is the other guy's name is Johnny Tapia. You know, it's a good point. He could beat so many just with his will. Some guys land their Sunday best and they can't stop him and they don't know what to do. Now, Hugo Soto, he takes a good shot, keeps coming forward. Johnny Tapia doesn't care. Oh, I hit you with my best, nothing happened. Well, I hit you 50 more times with my best. Let's see if you're still standing. Tapia gets into that almost southpaw stance here, closer to squared up. It sets up the right hook, but also keeps the left hook intact. Tapia's fighting a very textbook, perfect fight. 
it, it, it's funny how we have so many different styles. Power, slick boxer, out hustles you. Footwork is good. Punches are, are in tight, so he's not risking getting hit. And the angles are important because it still gives you three quarters efficiency from both sides if you square up. And there is Johnny inciting the crowd again. And Tapia does that sometimes when he believes he's on the verge of doing something big. Yeah. He wants an extra little burst of energy from the crowd because he feeds off it and he picks his game up. This is Tapia country here. Most of his fights have occurred in Albuquerque. Now some speed by Tapia, nice foot movement there. You see some awesome conditioning from fighters in the lower weight class. And here's a guy in the 115 pound division showing you power, but also the predictable speed. And he really unloads here. I guess Tapia figured he'd be down by now. Soto says, so what? <laughs> then they tap gloves. And he gets whacked. If you're Soto, why take the invitation to tap the glove and then taste the left hook? So a little bit of sh showmanship going on here. Johnny Tapia throws everything at Hugo Soto in round seven. Soto is still here, but his deficit grows on the cards. So we're ready for round eight here. Johnny Tapia's dominance continues over Hugo Soto. And Tony, although Soto has fought well, he already needs a knockout. It's, it's too bad. He hasn't won a round yet on, on my scorecard. He seems that he's effective for maybe 10 seconds of the round, which isn't going to win it for you. He has to crank up his offense. The problem is Johnny seems to be able to adapt to whatever Soto brings to him. If he puts pressure on him, Johnny's right there. He'll fight back. So it, 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 Soto has a big problem. He, he hasn't figured out Tapia because there's so many different Tapias in the ring, so many different styles, and he's getting beat by all of them. <laughs> you have to be able to beat a multiple personality. Good, strong right hand by Tapia from the angle. Another good right hand by Johnny Tapia. Staying focused. Not getting ahead of himself emotionally. And pretty much doing anything he wants thus far in the battle. And not losing, not losing patience, not getting frustrated. So, so many fighters want that knockout, have to have it. They, they feel like they're, they're, they're about to failure if they don't knock the guy out. But sometimes you just can't. So that means you just have to keep throwing punches. And that's what Johnny's doing. Good shots here by Tapia. Flush on Soto, who continues to come straight forward. Soto definitely has a world-class chin. Boy, in the generalization of Carlos Monzon and other tough Argentina fighters, Victor Galendez, for example, mm. he just continues to come forward and takes a good shot. His face isn't really swelling up yet, though he got cut earlier in the fight. The corners did a good job of, of stopping the flow of blood. Happy gets the crowd going, then lands the right hand. Now showboating a bit. Then lands the right again. Those piston punches of Tapia right now are slowing down Soto. Then all he's doing is following Tapia, walking into Johnny's power shots, which right now is all of them. Soto was loading up and then not firing. Tapia catches him on the way in, catches him on the way out. You know, this is a boxing clinic for any young fighters out there because you want to see what do you do against a guy you can't knock out. Does he stay focused? Does he get wild in his punches? Tapia has not thrown any wild punches in this fight. All his punches are controlled right there. If that was a wild punch, it did damage just the same. And this is a perfect example of why a straight-ahead fighter is ideally suited for someone who can move laterally. As Soto has walked into trap after trap by Johnny Tapia. So we close in on the final seconds of round eight. Tapia continues to dominate. Soto running out of time, but he'll try again when we come back. We get ready to start round nine. Johnny Tapia quick off the stool and does not want to tap gloves. Hugo Soto has tried to tap gloves with him every round. 
since the sixth. I think he can just forget about that because Tapia is trying to take care of business right now. I think he wants to tap gloves after he knocks him out. He'd like to tap Soto out indeed. Tapia with the cool looking left hook upstairs. Johnny Tapia, very polished throughout the first half of this fight. And now turning on the afterburners, trying to take Hugo Soto out of there. And I guess one good lesson for youngsters looking is, here's a guy with by far a lead here in no danger at all, not sitting on it. No, he's going right after. In fact, he came running off the stool as if uh, he needed the round to win. Uh, Tapia is, is, is a consummate pro. He just knows what he has to do, doesn't believe in taking time off during the fight, just comes to win every round, and if you come after him, he comes after you. Johnny Tapia, in terms of conditioning, seems like a throwback to days when fighters could go 20 rounds, 30 rounds, or more. Very few fighters today that you could, if you put them in a time machine and put them in the 30s or 40s, they'd be effective. But, but guys like Tapia, you know he'd be a name. Uh, he wouldn't be just a sparring partner back in those, those days. He'd be effective back then as he is right now. Tapia with the tremendous conditioning, also the good sense of the jab, the hook, and all that coming throughout the first eight rounds of this fight. Here he's been a little bit more studious and looking for more angles to box with Soto here, and Soto tries to come on a little bit. Now I get the feeling Johnny's a little bored because the guy's not giving him any competition. He wants somebody that's gonna make him look good, that he can get the crowd into it, that he can show off his hand and foot speed. Here he is when he lands on Soto. Soto takes such a good shot, he doesn't go anywhere. Soto keeps coming at him, and so Tapia piles up even more points. And Soto has been a good active fighter. Four wins to his credit already in 1996. And this, the fifth fight of the year for him, the most fights he's had in one year since 1993. So Soto getting a second win on his career this year. And of course, coming off the win over Lopez for the Continental title, then tries to go up and get the world title. And he has seen a difference in the competitive level. Johnny Tapia is showing some of that competitiveness by throwing a right hand when Hugo was pulling away from him, got him on top of the head. He's just punching from all angles. Whatever is available to be hit, he's going to reach it. Johnny Tapia has scored with anything, with everything, and as often as he wishes, but Hugo Soto is still there with three rounds to go. Hard press for Hugo Soto corner to tell him what to do to be effective. He's trying everything that he knows how. He's just not on the same level as Johnny Tapia. They could tell him, hit him with everything, but harder than you've been throwing. <laughs> because what else can you do against Johnny Tapia, who has seemed to have all the answers in this contest here? What you have to do is hope that the other guy backs up and makes a mistake. All right, I got to give his corner credit. That's a nifty little water bottle with a fan on it. At least it keeps him cool. I wonder if that's a nice job to have, covering the, uh, carrying the uh, electronic water sprayer. You have to get in line for that. Eh? That's true. You just don't, you just don't go to that position. That's a political <laughs> job, no doubt. In Johnny Tapia's corner, they should be much happier. Johnny Tapia, waving to Soto. That's part of the personality, letting him know, I'm in control here. And again, the tapping of the gloves. Soto kind of winced when he went out there, like, I'll tap gloves, but don't hit me. Now, tapping gloves comes in the final round. Maybe Soto has been trying to say since round six, let's make this the last right, round. Right, okay, you, you've proven your point. Thank you very much. Can I go home now? Johnny Tapia enjoying this showcase effort here against Hugo Soto. And Johnny Tapia, indeed, one of the true characters in boxing. You can see Soto just as frustrated now. He doesn't know what to throw. Even though he has 30 knockouts and, and 44 wins, he hasn't come close to hurting Johnny Tapia. He even has to pull up his trunks there. And he's tried to get to Tapia, but the quickness of Johnny Tapia, they're now a little bit of the, uh, they're overdoing it with the tapping of the gloves here. I think so. If I was a Soto, I think I'd raise my hand to the crowd to make the crowd come on, because that would just make them boo automatically. 
maybe make Johnny rush in and make a mistake. I mean, he's got nothing to lose right now. Well, if you've got some confidence in your ability to turn it around, that is a good idea. You do wonder, though, if Soto has any confidence left after being totally taken apart, like now, by Tapia. Tremendous body shots here by Tapia. Then he goes the other way. What shape you have to be in this late in the fight to crank five left hooks in a row. All to the same spot. That just slows your man down even more. If he was in quicksand before, <laughs> he's up to his neck now. And the quicksand has just gotten more slippery for Hugo Soto, whose offense has slowed down here in round 10, almost to a crawl, as he is just being dictated to by Johnny Tapia. And this, the quintessential example of why Johnny Tapia is undefeated. He adapts so so well to other styles. I think better than probably almost any fighter out there in any weight class. He just knows whatever you adjust to, he's got an answer for it. He puts the pressure on. He has several ways to win a fight. And he adjusts very well during the course of a fight. Now he's slugging with Soto, although he doesn't need to, out of brazen disrespect for Soto's power. And while some fighters are content to throw a combination, it's almost as if he's throwing double combinations. Everything's a four-punch combination or a five-punch combination. It's not just the standard one-two. Johnny Tapia would be upset if he lost a round based on the way he is going through the final stages of this bout. So Johnny Tapia has merely two rounds to go, and he will have a successful defense of his title, and thus far, it has been an overwhelming performance. We start the 11th round, scheduled for 12, and Johnny Tapia waving over to the crowd, taking care of business at his own pace. He is totally dominant against Hugo Soto of Argentina. Tapia has been out in front, showing his skills and taking Soto to school. Oh, he's, he's, uh, he's got uh, Soto to the point where he's going to flunk him. <laughs> he's just taking him to school and... Uh, Soto has not learned. He has not been able to adjust to Tapia. Tapia starts teeing off again with Soto against the ropes. Tapia cranking the hooks, and maybe he's a little bit too straight on against Soto to land these hooks at this point. But look at the hand speed after 10 rounds. Tapia pouring it on, the crowd rising, giving a standing ovation, and there he feeds off it, as we've mentioned many times before. This is Dave Bontempo along with Tony Page. Glad you've joined us for the WBO Junior Bantamweight Championship bout and the champion Johnny Tapia having his name called out by the crowd. This is a teaching exercise for all youngsters. Another thing Johnny Tapia does when he lands all those combinations, his feet are in the perfect position. He's never out of position to throw more punches. And so Johnny Tapia, the baby-faced assassin, Halfway through round 11 and doing it exactly his way. As a knockout turns. would be a nice way to cap it, but he has done everything else. Turned a little softball just for a minute, which probably is, is even more confusing to Soto, thinking, oh my, oh my goodness, I'm getting beat one way. Now he's going to switch to softball. Don't tell me he's got another side to us. <laughs> Soto has been game. He has hung tough. But in the second half of the fight, he has been dominated totally by Tapia. Tapia won the early rounds, some of them in fairly close fashion, but since round seven, he has just been in another class level. Tapia's just taking his time. Even when he slows down, he's still beating Soto to the punch, still dominating the rounds. He's doing everything he's supposed to do. Here he is coming on again. Soto has no answer for it. Well, Soto has to be discouraged. He has simply been out-hustled, overpowered, and outclassed. Other than that, he's got no problems. <laughs> Give his corner some credit. They, they stopped that uh, cut, the flowing of the blood early in the fight. Hasn't been a problem, but it's almost as if Tapia is avoiding the cut and hitting him everywhere else. So Johnny Tapia puts another impressive round in against a tough 
and spirited challenger. One round to go. Final round coming up. Johnny Tapia touches gloves and does the hug with Hugo Soto, who has been a willing recipient of everything Tapia has doled out so far. Tapia just three minutes away from a successful seventh defense of his WBO Junior Bantamweight title. I have uh, Tapia ahead in a shutout, 11 rounds to nothing, 110 to 99. Uh, Soto would need two knockouts to win. So you have to knock him out, you have to get him up and knock him out again because Tapia's that far ahead. One knockout gets him a draw. There you but go. But Tapia would keep his title. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's a new rule, but many people don't know about it. <laughs> Why not? Johnny Tapia is so far out in front and really uh, a tremendous performance, one to be admired here. Yeah, Soto has been competitive to an extent in this fight. He has been game, he has been coming on, trying to make the fight. But Tapia has simply exhibited the world-class skills, which puts him in the realm of boxing's elite fighters. Oh, he has to be in, in the top 10 pound for pound, because he's that good. The way he controls the action, the way he controls his opponent, not a wild punch, footwork always in the right position, enough defense that he doesn't get hit. And when he does get hit, he's pulling away from the punch, so he's not taking the full force of it. Look at him, see right there, backing up, trying to get away from the punch. And then Johnny sits and he's ready to, to, to attack. And while he's an excellent technician, there is a certain street meanness to Johnny Tapia. And there is an impulsive, aggressive attitude that enables him to overpower opponents. So he's a technician with an angry agenda. And if you give him the opportunity to knock him out, he's going to take it. So the overdone routine of the tap gloves continues. For Johnny Tappy, it continues to be a sparring session as the mouthpiece of Soto falls out. Tappy raises the gloves. Now we'll try to turn it up and finish this fighter for his hometown fans in Albuquerque. The sports stadium exploding in delight as Tapia unleashes everything. Now Soto comes back at him. And a good way to finish it off. Mr. the crowd's paying attention. Johnny wants noise and they respond. And then he opens up. Good, good flurry by Tapia. Final seconds of the fight. Johnny Tapia has done everything but knock Hugo Soto out. He will go to 37 and 0. Hugo definitely has a world-class chin. He just doesn't have the world-class talent of a Johnny Tapia. On any other occasion, Hugo Soto might have won with this performance. Probably would have. But against Johnny Tapia, just not nearly enough. And Johnny Tapia's title is secure. So Johnny Tapia, the sportsman that he is, Lifts up Hugo Soto. And of course, uh, glances at the people in the audience. There's Oscar De La Hoya. We can only assume it's a friendly exchange. There's no diet in the world that would get Johnny Tapia up to Oscar's weight class. And there is Johnny Maestro having enjoyed his music with the crowd. I think Oscar was just happy with the performance. It was a great job by Tapia. Just controlled the action, never was in danger of losing. Just an A-plus performance by Tapia. A good example of why you like technicians and why you like just about everybody down in that junior bantamweight and bantamweight division. You get tremendous action from the lighter weight fighters, and Johnny Tapia gives an example of that with this performance. It's like the feeling out process is now or before the fight, not during. Johnny Tapia gets into this crowd atmosphere more than practically any other fighter. He is a different competitor when he's in Albuquerque. You probably could beat Johnny Tapia if you could buy out the arena and don't put any fans in it. Then he has no energy to throw That's off it. of. <laughs> then you might lose a split decision. But right. take him on in Albuquerque, <laughs> and you better make sure you're getting paid. So Hugo Soto, after the win that gave him the Continental title, not able to parlay it into the title, world title here against Johnny Tapia. Just too much of Johnny Tapia. So Johnny Tapia 
takes it, wins it impressively, goes to 37-0.